there are times that you feel um, you have no provision is like your things are off the hook and there are times that you feel God says that he'll supply all our needs but why is he not supplying why 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 am I in this situation why am I so broke why are things not working on my way why is it that uh, He's like God has closed his eyes from my side. He's, he's, uh, he's blocked his ears from me. He's not listening to me. And right now my situation is very bad. There are people who come up in these situations and they, they try, they somehow kind of start um, to, to, to mistrust God. And they say, probably he's not going to be. He's not going to provide for me. But God has promised us one thing. He's going to provide for us. He has given us the promise of provision. And that's exactly what I'm going to be speaking today. The promise of provision. Now, let me tell you something before I start. Now, provision only comes in one uh, style. Now, uh, one thing about God is that he's going to provide for you when something is really necessary. He provides our needs, not our wants. You see, there are many people who want uh, their wants to be met, but not their needs. Now, what are your needs? God says that he'll provide you with uh, food to eat, clothes to wear. Uh, food to eat and clothes to wear. Actually, even shelter is not, uh, is not a need. Shelter is just uh, an added advantage. But clothes to wear and food to eat, God has said he'll always provide for you when you trust in him. Okay? So he says he'll provide our needs, what we need. Now, let me tell you something. You may be needing a car to go to missions, to go and preach to people in a certain place where it's really deep and there's no uh, other means of transport. And you tell God, God, I'm trusting you that you may provide for me. This, you may provide me with this car that I may go and touch other people's lives or that I may go and work easily, be able to work in my job easily, and then I can have extra time to read the, uh, your word. And God will look at that and then he will say, okay, this is not about self-praise. It's not about uh, uh, people to see how better you are and how wealthy you've become. It's about meeting your needs, okay, meeting your normal needs. And that one God will provide. But if you, let's say, let's take an instance. You want, you're telling God, God, please, I really want a Range Rover. I want a Mercedes Benz so that people can really understand who I am. So that they can know that I am, a, you know, I am rich and people can understand and my neighbors can respect me. Now, do you think God is going to give you that? No, he's not going to give you that. That is uh, something that uh, he will not uh, lay low to give you. That's a want. You want it so that you can show off, so that you can become a... Uh, uh, what can can we say so that you can be proud uh, you you can pride yourself even more so god is not going to provide you with that or maybe you tell god oh god i want uh, um i want to you help me to become an mp for example a member of parliament please god please please i want to become a member of parliament but you know you're not going there to help the people you want to go there and steal and be corrupt and do things like that you will never become a member of parliament he will, never, uh, he will never aid you in such kind of things. God will always provide you with things which are logical and things which are all about him getting the glory. So if you want to do something and then uh, for your own glory, then God is not involved with that. That is a want. Those are things. God does not provide you with wants. He provides you with needs. He provides you with needs. And I wanted to make this clear so that people can understand. Even before I start talking about the promise of provision, because there are people who think that, God, I want you to provide me with a lot of wealth so that people in my village can understand who I am. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I, I'll give you a good example with myself. <clears throat> this is a personal uh, testimony of something which I did back then. There's a time that uh, I really worked so much hard and I... Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, I really prayed so much and told God, oh God, please, I, ne I need to buy a Range Rover. I need you to help me to buy a Rover. And uh, I knew back in my mind that this Range Rover was not about just convenience. It was, I, of course, I had a different car. Uh, it was about showing off and it was about uh, showing people, uh, you know, uh, how big I am and how successful I've become. And I can show on Instagram and Facebook and things like that. Okay, fine. 
uh, it happened. I got a Range Rover. I bought it, and uh, it was okay. And I went rounds and rounds and did things. But within a couple of uh, maybe just not long, the the car spoiled. All of a sudden, just spoiled for no reason. And uh, it gave me a lot of problem with my gearbox. With the gearbox. It was a good car, uh, a, a well uh, car. And then it gave me a lot of problems with the with the gearbox and I prayed and I told God please God why is this happening why is this happening and and uh, I just got it the other day please Lord remember I prayed this uh, blue ticks blue ticks God was not even listening to that and uh, that car at the end of the day it ended up costing me so much and uh, at the end of the day I sold it and everything happened and I sat down back and asked myself how did this even happen and I started looking back at the motive of why I bought the car. And it was all about pride. It was all about, I want to show out myself and show out to other people how better I am than them. And God could not condone with that. And of course, yes, fine, I got it. But at the end of the day, it ended in tears. It, it gave me more loss than even the, the benefit I thought. Having, having had to buy a whole gearbox of a Range Rover, you know, it's almost 250,000 Kenya shillings. I mean, at least I bought it uh, second under, almost 150,000. And at the end of the day, it didn't work. And I prayed and I prayed and I told God, please, please, what's happening with this car? What's wrong? Nobody seems to find the problem. At the end of the day, I sold it. Why? Because God looked at that thing and he said okay you want it for your glory it's not going to happen but i've had uh, uh, i've had other cars which i've stayed with so for so long which are just for convenience and i can go from point a to point b and i have had places to stay and place to sleep and and you sit down and ask god can really provide and he only provides what is necessary he doesn't provide your wants he provides your needs there are times that I've told God, God, please, I need you to provide for me the next two months. I don't want to work so that I can sit down and study the Bible and teach people the Bible or do something else. Or maybe because God, I know the moment I sit down and start concentrating on work, I not be able to do anything. And God grants me. There's a time that I've stayed almost four or five months without working. I'm just reading the Bible and enjoying and sitting down and watching this and that, this preaching and, and God always provides. Why? Because he provides your needs. I had the craving of reading the Bible. I had a time that I dedicated and I told God, God, I want to understand the Bible. I've never had time, simple time to sit down and read the Bible. Every time I'm always busy, running after money, running after this. Run, please provide for me so that I can sit down and read your word. I need to understand what you're saying in your word. And then I can teach other people about the Bible. And God always gave the provision. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 8. It says, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to give you all favor abound towards you, okay? That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God can send favor to your side, so that 